guys. Do you guys want to hear a joke? Go on. <laughs> I like how Matt's not answering. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I don't think Matt he wants is joke to Switzerland joke. on this one. It's not getting involved. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, this is this is for uh Stuart only then. Um what's green and fuzzy and can kill you if it falls out of a tree? I don't know. What's green and fuzzy and will kill you if it falls out of a tree? A pool table. Only ah! if it hits you when it falls out of the tree. Ah! Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I got a perfect yeah. thing for this. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I guess that would be green Shut up, and Matt! Fuzzy. Matt doesn't like my jokes. <laughs> kill you. <laughs> I guess these are all things that are true about that. Cool. Do you want to start the show? or? <laughs> With me, the bubbly, <laughs> the newly haircutted. That's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, the greatest runner in the world, Matt Ockamp. Hey, Matt. I'm so fast, is the thing. So fast, yeah. And so f- you couldn't imagine how fast I can run. Is that if it? I run faster <laughs> than imagination, like that's pretty crazy fast. I don't even know what that means. Also, we have a special guest with us today, Stuart Ashens from the channel Ashens. Hi, Ashens. Hello. Thank you for inviting me on. Yes, thank you for hey, being thanks here. Thanks for com- Thanks for thanks for coming. Ashens and I or Stuart, used to be on a website together that will not be named here, but I think you know what it is, viewers and listeners. YouTube.com. No, <laughs> stop it. Archive.org. <laughs> yeah, we're both on archive.org. <laughs> we used to be on this aggregate video reviewer website, and I tried really hard to be friends with, with Stuart, and he just ignored me. Whoa. And then, like, ten years later... He accepted my friend request. Stuart? I have no memory of you ever getting in touch. But to be fair, I have almost no memory of that period at all anyway. Oh, I think I, know, I was on right? the website for about 14 seconds. Maybe oh, you, a little I bit shorter. Yeah. Oh. I probably just shut my mind off to anything from that site at the time. Yeah, honestly, people don't even know that I was even a part of it. <laughs> But that's because my content was very bad at that time. My content is not bad anymore, so people actually watch it now. I hope. <laughs> it was <laughs> right, 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 guys. Good. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stuart, would you like to tell? I'm sure people know who Ashens is, but for our listeners at home that maybe aren't familiar, would you like to tell people who you are? Certainly, I'm just a man with a man's courage, and <laughs> I. <laughs> put things on youtube and i've been doing it for about 18 years now which is more terrifying every time i say oh my god they haven't even had that website for that long oh they have they've had it for 19 years because it was about six months old when i first uploaded i think wow you're an og i'm so old now oh (laughs) (laughs) dearie me um yeah i started off reviewing reviewing in inverted commas there um sort of bad (laughs) electronics and cheap knockoff items and things and just kept it going for some reason and i have a penchant for very old games which is uh where i tend to uh, branch off into sometimes absolutely Uh, i think we're all part of the uh the gaming space in, in in some way uh, but I didn't know that you had a little bit of a soft spot for adventure games until I I joined your stream. And it, it, usually I joined the quiz streams just to torture myself with my lack of knowledge about <laughs> obscure stuff. Uh, but you were playing the, oh God, let me see if I get this right. The Adventures of Mad Dog Williams. Yep. The Adventures of Mad Dog Williams in the Dungeons of Deridian. I, I made don't myself know remember it. that. I don't even know what this is. The adventures Matt, you of don't? Mad... No, Mad Dog Williams. Oh, you yep. gotta look it up. In the dungeons of Deridian. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. It's Released on a surprising up. number of formats. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's somewhat surprisingly. I um, really wanted people to play this Mad Dog game. 
Okay. <laughs> Just blanket release of Mad Dog. It's Mad Dog season, everyone. Get to the shops. <laughs> yeah. uh, people are clamoring for it. Yeah. Thinking... <laughs> Just people standing in the middle of the street screaming Mad Dog, tears running down their face. <laughs> It was the Skyrim of what is this 1981? <laughs> when did this come out? This came out in. I... Oh, this is disappointing. This game came out in 1992, and I would like to say that uh, King's Quest VI came out in 1992. They were a little behind. Whoever did. It, it, yeah, it looks did. like a game a from about five years before, and yeah. that's when five years in gaming meant a lot. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. to, to be polite to them, but uh, it is certainly. A, a game, um, yes. Let's it, put a it, game. it was one um, we Claire played as a child, but never got anywhere with. So he was like, "Oh, we have to try and complete that one day." And well, I can see why. What in <laughs> what? Um, and then the last game you were playing was also an adventure game on stream. Uh, Heaven's Dawn. Am I right? That's it. Yep. Uh, the one I can never rem remember the name of. So I'm glad you could. Honestly, uh, terrible name. Heaven's it's, it's Dawn. Not good. I keep wanting to call it Heaven's Gate. That would be a very different game and probably not something Twitch would allow. My God. Um, certainly not something I'd want to play, I don't think. Um, but yeah, no. anything point and click tends to go down quite well with the audience. Um, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I find. Like stream, for streaming especially, I think those narrative, but especially if they're kind of not great and we can all riff on it a little bit those are those are your best bet i think whoa so heaven's dawn seems like a weird combination of maybe like legend of kyrandia style pixel graphics but yeah. then there's these screenshots that look like really crude 3d <laughs> let me look. is that it's all 2D, entirely 2D. Oh, what am I talking about? No, there are FMV sequences at the start, which, yeah, look like they were rendered entirely out of cones and cornflakes packets. It's it's not good. Wow. And the pixel art is beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, but the 3D, yeah. It's it's it could be a shame how many beautiful pixel art games are just so bad i know it's disappointing <laughs> oh, yes. it is disappointing i had a thought what was it oh yeah our first segment of course <laughs> matt come on you're supposed to... <laughs> i i didn't I, I, you could have had any thought in the universe you could have been true. thinking about the speed of my run for example yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, I could have been inspired by so something. I could you have been, been thinking about how you're I'm an artist. Thinking about how you're an artist. Yeah, yeah exactly. A lot. So, uh, what have you been playing lately, Roses? So okay, hear me out. Um, we just recorded a couple days ago. That's true. And I, <laughs> and I have no, I had no time to play the game that I said I was going to play, which is Norco. It's a mm. indie adventure game. But however, I did have time to watch Stuart play and finish Mad Dog and then start Heaven's Dawn. So I'm just going to use that as my experience. <laughs> by proxy playing these yeah. two old bad games. I didn't even know what Heaven's Dawn was. I'd never heard of it. I'm I'm very intrigued. I don't... It, is it not American? I have to look this up now. I need to know how I missed <laughs> it. I think... I would assume it's Australian just because the few bits of voice acting in it all sound Australian, but... That could just be where it was acting? dubbed. Yeah, but only during the beautiful FMV sequences. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people see these two videos specifically on Twitch or on YouTube? They oh. are on Twitch, yes, okay. um, but right. they will have fallen off Twitch fairly soon. <laughs> so because they don't keep Wait. things very long on Twitch. Oh, the box. <laughs> so. Go get it. Go get it, everybody. Yes. Go quick. <laughs> <laughs> it may have already gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'll, do a let's, I'll do a let's play on it. Well, Stuart, have you been playing anything cool lately? I'm going to have to level with you. I've played nothing mm -hmm. except Baldur's Gate 3 since it came out. Wow. Oh, yeah? Okay. Mm, yeah. I, I need to stop playing Baldur's Gate 3 and play <laughs> something else. Yeah. So how many hours are you into that game? Literally hundreds. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't know, but a lot of hundreds. I just keep finishing it yeah. and then going, oh, this this would be cool to try this sort of build. Oh, I'll start again. And then you start all the way over again. Yep. Holy I've completed it five times. Uh, I think I'm on the wow. run. <laughs> oh. Holy cow. What, what is it that makes you just like 
you can't get enough of it. I don't really, I don't normally get like this with games where I'll yeah. sort of just keep playing the same one over. I play a game, finish and go, right, that's it for the time being. I might go back to something like um, one of the FromSoft games, like Dark Souls and that, because they tend mm. to, you know, be slightly different the next time round. But this one, I love turn-based combat. Mm -hmm. Uh and it's just so well done. It's so well written. There's so many different things you can do or do differently. Even the sixth time round, I'm finding new stuff. You know, it's an incredible game in that sense. Um, but it's the combat I like, really. Right. I have not played it yet because I have a problem with losing myself to video games and just mm. not doing anything else i i have i don't even want to look at my steam for how many hours i put into stardew valley i don't even want to look at it it's, it's harrowing at this point and i guess the last game i got really kind of like that with but it, it's not a long game is disco elysium which i actually did want to just replay again uh with different right. stats but like i lost like three days to that game i don't know what happened i didn't do any hmm. art a video happened and I don't even know how I got it out there. Like I was just very, <laughs> uh, very into it. Uh, so Baldur's Gate, I, I realize that it's very good and people love it and play it, but I think I can't sacrifice myself to Baldur's Gate. I, I can understand right. that. Yep. Cause it, it will suck you in like yeah. a big D and D Hoover. If that is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you should, uh, you should stream it. And then like, then you're like doing two things at once. You know, you're playing a fun game and also you're sort of kind of working a little bit. I, I couldn't do that because people would be backseat and going, oh, don't do it like yeah. that. You can min max it like this. Like, no, I must play my Baldur's Gate how I want to play it. <laughs> this is my fun time. Go away. That's true. That's true. And with adventure games that are hard, hard AF, it's hard for them to backseat games. Just like, well. <laughs> We don't know what to do. do yeah, you know we don't know do? either. We are yeah. also as confused as you are. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. or they just like will smugly watch and be like, you're getting closer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I've never, I've never, I've never streamed a video game, but I've definitely uh, played an adventure game in front of somebody. <laughs> so. So that happens because I primarily stream adventure games when I'm not doing my impressive no death run uh, at, Aladdin, at Aladdin on the Sega Genesis. <laughs> Go me. Uh, yeah, it's still on Twitch. I saved it. I have a no death run on Aladdin for the Genesis. And you know why I did it? Because someone on Twitter, some dude, said I was lying about it. And that I was a fake gamer oh, girl. Oh, 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 oh. I know, oh, no, I know, boy. guys, I know. Uh, so yeah, I beat it, and I, it's still up there. <laughs> That's why I did that. <laughs> Holy um, cow! I could no, never do that with that it's game. Tough. That game uh, was but, so tough. I, it, I can just do it like, like nothing now. It's just muscle memory at this point. I would often stop playing that game to go get an apple from the kitchen and see if I could do the thing. What? Where he rolls the apple down his arm <laughs> and bounces it up and catches it and takes a bite. And wow. so then that would be what I did for the rest of the day instead of playing the Aladdin game. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you were going to recreate the bit where he throws an apple at a guard or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's, uh, yeah. You know, I don't know what it's like in England, but uh, over here, there's not just many guards standing around. <laughs> There are that's not. what I was thinking. <laughs> but that's probably because you throw apples at them, so it puts them off. Oh. <laughs> that's why we have no guards here. They're they're afraid yeah. of getting we used to, we by used an to apple. A, a well guarded country, but now all the guards have left with uh, applesauce on their face. <laughs> you'd never ask <laughs> uh no uh, uh, like you said we just recorded like two days just ago recorded, yeah but i did manage to get a little bit of the game little guardsman in okay, um I'll look that up so little guardsman is a like a very cute cartoony game um full disclosure we did get codes from the developer oh um, we did 
Yes. I am yep. very bad at this. <laughs> go push up roads. Curse you. You might want to go check it out. Pushing up roads. Okay. It's, it's in your email. But uh, bad. yeah, it's if you've ever played played the game Papers, Please, uh-huh. uh, Ooh, yes, which yeah. you know is for people who don't know is like you're in a Soviet uh, styled country. Um, and you play a border guard, and you're checking people's like uh, passports, Document- yeah, documentation, and transportation, documentation yeah. uh, against a series of rules, and then making very hard ethical decisions about whether <laughs> you let some people skate by and let you know your family, your own family starve, or uh, or whether you are brutal, brutally strict about the rules. And um, it's dark, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real dark game. So this is like a bright, sunny version of that. <laughs> you... I was wondering where this oh. was going. I'm like, what? Okay. So Lil Guardsman, you play uh you play a little girl, a little girl named Lil, <laughs> uh, who oh. uh her she takes over for her dad, who is a guardsman. Maybe got an apple thrown at him or something, whatever. He's not <laughs> He's not guarding the kingdom. It's like in a in like a cartoony fantasy kingdom of elves and orcs and wizards and such, right? Um, so you watch his guard booth for the day, and you're doing basically the same thing as Papers, Please. You are, but it's uh, like not dark. It's happy. No, uh, yeah, no. There's a little bit of dark humor, but it's about being silly and fun and funny. And, you know, some of the decision, decisions you make about who to let in and who not to let in um, will seemingly, and again, I'm, I'm very, I'm only like an hour in, um, but seemingly they will affect the rest of the world um, and okay. maybe have, you know, uh, sort of cascading consequences uh, towards the rest of the story. It looks um, adorable. I, I looked up, I'm looking at a screenshot and it looks absolutely, uh, I have a soft spot for like cartoony adventure mm. games. It's my jam. It's very cute. It's very, it's very sweet. Uh, it, it seems to be very funny. Uh, it seems like also there's a lot left to discover. It's also like surprisingly difficult <laughs> um, because the yeah, after the first day, um one of your dad's bosses tells like incentivizes you to get a perfect you know four star rating on every person who comes through and i after that first day after like the tutorial i cannot get a four star rating to save my life i get a three star wow. rating basically every time so it's like it's like one of those games like uh easy easy to learn difficult to master just yeah. in terms of uh, there you have you just have a lot of options on how to interrogate these people tools to use to like x-ray their bags or spray truth serum on them or things what like the that heck? that and seems wants, unethical and it wants you to pick uh you know it wants you to like pick the exact right things to uncover each person's secrets and stories and then allow them or disallow them entry so that's a little guardsman i'll probably I mean, I'll definitely play more of it, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to compare it, like, very directly to Papers, Please, while I'm looking at the cutest screenshot I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was about, oh, no. Yeah, again, yeah, on the That's third strange. day, her dad starves to death because you couldn't pay, pay for Jeez, his food. No, no it's, it's just, it's again, it's a silly, sweet version of this. Okay. Of papers, please. I will actually check that out. I usually do. Uh, Stuart, Matt is amazing at game recommendation. So if you ever want to escape Baldur's Gate 3 <laughs> or something else, he is really good at, at pinning down really great adventure games. I currently have a awesome. list of games I have to play for an upcoming book. Um, and they're all favorite games of somebody, so I'm hoping they're all good. Disco Elysium oh, wow. is on the list, so that's nice. Weird. That's yeah. awesome. We just had an episode about Disco Elysium. It is an it incredibly is. good game. As yeah. if, yeah, as if you needed anyone to tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> that's because no the one's prevailing been opinion. About it. Yes, uh, Stuart, are um, you another book? 
Yes, yep. I'm joining forces with um, other YouTube man, Dan Nerd Cubed, and we're doing a retro versus modern games book where I make him play a load of retro games, which he has not played for the hideous crime of being too young. And <laughs> he has recommended me some more recent, mostly indie interesting games because oh, cool. I haven't played them because I'm too old. So, um, yeah, and then we'll at the end say all these games were good and that'll be the conclusion of the book spoilers <laughs> that sounds that sounds fascinating that's a really cool premise matt we should write a book mm. uh, can we just steal stewart's premise yes sorry okay. Stuart. <laughs> we're gonna write your book we're just gonna <laughs> <Yes. write> <laughs> we should have kept a secret <laughs> <laughs> uh steward why was i not asked to collaborate on this book all right we gotta move to the next segment <laughs> <laughs> matt is well aware enough trying to find enough money for my book for two people let alone three oh, i bet <laughs> no no matt matt is well aware that i will uh, harass any creator that doesn't want to collab with me yeah <laughs> basically every creator that comes in the show <laughs> <laughs> Rezes needs to ask them why she wasn't involved in all their major works. <laughs> Tom Cruise, why wasn't I in cocktail? Yes. Why? Why wasn't I? I love cocktails. I would have been perfect for that. <laughs> he didn't try to indoctrinate me into Scientology. That's all I'm saying. I do think, though, we should move on to our next segment, though. Uh, we uh, watched, we both watched and really enjoyed um ashen's your video on moon logic in adventure mm -hmm. games and we wanted to dig a little bit deeper into that subject with you on this podcast so yep. why don't we take a quick break listen to some spanky rex arena and be right back <laughs> everyone welcome back to save your game i'm pushing up roses that's matt all camp and that's yep. Stuart ashens hello i pointed i don't know if anybody could feel that but i was pointing to matt and then i was pointing to Stuart. yeah i mean as long as you got the general directions correct but i think we are both, not. <laughs> we're both east of you so i you'd just be pointing <laughs> the same direction i do not actually know what direction I'm sitting in right now? Is right. That bad? You, let's see. That so if normal? you're in Chicago, so I'm a little southeast of you, and Ashens would be a little northeast of you. So let's make let's make make sure you got the directions right when you point it. <laughs> okay, I will. I will check on that. You, you mean you don't have a giant compass on your desk? I thought you liked adventure games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found one on the ground to pick one up yet. Or... No, yes, oh, you have to. Yeah, no? fair. Yeah. You haven't killed a load of rats in a cellar and been given it as a reward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to fashion one out of sugar water and a cork and a, <laughs> a needle. <laughs> Magnetized needle. <laughs> yeah. So that that's why I haven't found my inventory on the dirty ground. <laughs> uh, and speaking of finding inventory on the dirty ground. Today, I would like to talk a little bit more about Moon Logic with Stuart. Uh, if you haven't watched it, he did a great talk about Moon Logic. Uh, it is on his channel. And I think that it, your channel is just called Ashens, right? Correct. A S H E N S. One word, like Madonna. Why would it be two, why would it be two words? <laughs> um, How would Ash it be two words? In. Ash. Hens. Oh, okay. Ash. <laughs> Ash. As hens. As hens. As <laughs> As hens, <laughs> yeah, it, totally yeah, it's, it's a it's hen perspectives on things. So like as hens, yeah. we feel that corn good. As hens, we feel fox bad. Yeah. Chicken wire fence. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for clarifying that it is one word. <laughs> um, so yeah, I watched your talk. And I like, I love that you put the stipulation that we're not going to talk about Sierra games in the talk. We might talk about them here because uh, they do come up, uh, you know, a lot in Moon Logic. But I always appreciate when people go off the LucasArts. And, and I, I don't care what people say about LucasArts. There are some Moon Logic 
puzzles in Lucas mm-hmm. Ar- Lucas Arts games, but I like that you kind of skipped over Sierra. Uh, not skipped, you know, purposely excluded. Uh, although you did have a bonus Phantasmagoria too at the end there, which I appreciate. <laughs> that was yes, one of my favorites. Oh, I've just remembered I got an email from the guy who who was the main actor in Phantasmagoria too, asking me to go on his podcast. I don't oh, even go uh... back to him. Oh. Yeah, he has a podcast, Conversations with Curtis, I believe yes. it's called. Oh yeah, my god, yeah. I haven't left it too long. I totally forgot. Oh, how do <laughs> I, I admin? You know what? I actually liked Phantasmagoria 2, and I liked it better than Phantasmagoria 1, and I don't know if that's controversial or weird or or what. What are your guys' opinion? I've never played the first one, but I like the second one. I played it so long ago now, I can barely remember it. I could probably play it again, actually. I just yeah. vaguely remember being annoyed by the puzzle that I mentioned in the talk. And yeah. <clears throat> he's in an office. And I remember the ending, obviously. Um, oh, yeah, the ending is... <laughs> goes somewhere. Yeah, it was... It, I just remember enjoying it. It's one of those things where you were in the world of the FMV game of the time. And often they wouldn't get people in who could do the sort of basic of acting and yeah. it'd just be, we've got Jeremy from Accounts, he'll be the hero. <laughs> and it's like, oh no, this is not working, guys. But Phantasmagoria 2, you know, everybody brought it, you know, there was a performance in everybody and that really elevated it to, you know, something you were interested in seeing where it went as opposed to, you know, I can't pick up the envelope. Or whatever you'd get in the, yeah, right. the ones where you feel like they spent a million dollars on all the tech around it, and then fifteen cents on the actors. You know, I mean that is kind of what happened, though, isn't it? Uh, even for the uh, just the pixel, the pixel art voice acted games, we're all other programmers and friends of friends and people who are not are not voice actors at all. Um, Phantasmagoria two, at least, it had some charm too. I I recall people actually kind of liking the characters uh and, and feeling even a little like sympathetic towards some of them cuz as uh, spoiler alert guys people die in phantasmagoria that's that's what <laughs> happens in these games um but like yeah there's i i did a, i did i mentioned it in some video and people were like oh yeah trevor that character i love that character <laughs> like mm. that's rare for a, a live acted game cuz usually the quality is not good I think that Phantasmagoria 1 is probably a better, like a a better story, which is hard to say, but it's just because, because, and maybe it's even a better game just because of how weird Phantasmagoria 2 is. But for some reason, I think I had more fun, like I'd be more willing to go back to Phantasmagoria 2 than 1. There's something a little more fun about it fun it is the charm isn't it i think <laughs> yeah there's a charm in just how how like weirdly serious it takes all this really strange stuff it does all the emails you have to check you guys you gotta check those emails <laughs> some of those emails creeped me out i'd forgotten about the emails yeah that was a that was quite a lot of the game was email related, actually. Sure it? was. <laughs> it's got one of the best taglines of any horror game, hasn't it? A puzzle of flesh. That's really sort of evocative and creepy. It's scandalous. And when they say a puzzle of the flesh, are they referring to that weird meat computer that you play with at the very end <laughs> of the game? The one that's like the alien computer where it's just like I remember a bunch of buttons on like a, yeah. a sack of alien goo yeah (laughs) or Um, or is it because people get i'm gonna go a little dark here but that's okay because it's it's you know it's who i am is it because people get like their flesh like you know like cut up because it's one of those games guys it's one of the what are those kind of games called not i guess not exploitation something else just slasher uh, slasher sure Body horror, yeah. Body that's horror, it. yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yes, Stuart, good job. It is body horror. I-, I wanted to talk about Moon Logic for a second. Do you, either of you know like the origins of that term? Because it fits what's happening so well. Um, mm-hmm. the idea of like, yeah, maybe this would be logical if we were mm-hmm. on the moon, if we were moon people. But do you, do you guys know where the term came from? I 
have no clue as the etymology of it, actually. Yeah. Uh, I kind of do. Uh, okay. <laughs> let me... <laughs> I might be cheating a little bit. I might be bringing up my video on Moon Logic. I did a video on Moon Logic. Okay, so the earliest, the earliest term that was used for this, I do remember this now, okay. is for a Roberta Williams game, and it's as early as 2000. So a long time ago, this term has been around for a while. It started out as like dream logic. Like I couldn't dream of, like what is this? This is so right. insane. Like you could only dream of this kind of stuff. Um, and then it just kind of slowly went into moon logic. And I think, I think the etymology is kind of like, like if you look at the moon, like you go crazy. So it, it's just, it's just, it's just saying that like these, these things are crazy or yeah, like you said, are you on the, you could only figure this out on the moon or something like that, but it started out as dream logic mm -hmm. in 2000. I remember it being called dream logic and I had totally yeah. forgotten that. Yeah. And Dream logic makes it like dream logic seems like a little bit more self-explanatory of a mm -hmm. of a term. And you're saying it is only as recent as 2000 that this mm -hmm. was this concept <laughs> was being yeah. discussed. Wow. Yeah. yeah. OK. I don't know what they were calling it prior. Um, and, you know, it could be because that's just what we were used to. If you really think about it, I mean, adventure games had moon logic until the end. Even LucasArts, which, you know, they didn't have soft blocks, they didn't have unwinnables, but insane adventure, ad insane puzzles have been around uh, up until 2000, honestly. Cause what right. is it? I'm trying to think, what, what Roberta Williams game were they even talking about? Quickly, to the Google Tron. <laughs> um, <laughs> Asking all the hard questions here today. What well, do you... Do you, you know, guys... okay... Okay. Hang on, let, sorry, I, let me explain no, this. Please. I think what was happening was I think people were playing these older games in 2000 as adventure games uh, started. Yeah, and I think people <clears throat> started to refer to those old games, but especially the Roberta Williams games as having dream logic. Right. Do, do you guys feel like there's a difference between dream logic or moon logic and just absurd puzzles? Like, um, for example, like an example of moon logic, obviously this is the one everyone goes to, um, would be the uh, Guybrush Threepwood using a <laughs> using a hypnotized monkey <laughs> to oh, yes. turn uh, to turn a fire hydrant, like the 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 bolt on a fire hydrant, because in America the tool that would be used for that is called a monkey wrench. So. There is a logic, but it's absolutely bonkers, right? Yeah. Now, there are other puzzles where it's just like, there is no reason why a person ever would think to do that. And it doesn't <laughs> hold, like, even when you know the solution, it does not hold any kind of logic, right? Do you guys feel that those are just two sides of the same coin? Or do you feel that those are different? I think they're connected, but it's that thing of, like, the monkey wrench, there is some sort of logic path you can kind of follow, but it's also the intent of it. It's it's supposed to be a bit of an absurdist gag. Right. You know, oh, monkey wrench, should we using a monkey as a wrench? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, you couldn't work it out. Um, but um, <laughs> the proper moon logic stuff isn't necessarily something absurdist. It can be something quite mundane, but something that you would just never think to do because it makes no right. sense, um, either in circumstance or just in general. Yeah, I think, I think the monkey wrench thing was more... It's like a pun puzzle, almost. It's like you have to think of a pun to get to that solution. And even though it's frustrating, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure if it's like the moon logic that we're discussing or if it's just like aggravating and like, really, guys, really? This is the puzzle you went with? <laughs> well, so, uh, Ashens, what do you feel is like a, a very mundane example of moon logic? There's a great one, and I always mention this because it uh, was a game I had as a child and could never do it until I read, because obviously in the days pre-internet, you had to wait for somebody to bring out a magazine with a solution <laughs> in. And I read the solution and was like, great, I could have tried this for the rest of my life and I would never have worked this out. 
So it's a game called Operation Stealth, which I think was released in America as James Bond The Stealth Affair, which is, is oh. weird. In America, it had a James Bond license, and in the UK, it didn't. I don't quite I did know not what happened there. know that. <laughs> it's, it's very odd. Also, the game was totally written to not be James Bond, and they didn't bother altering it. So, like, James Bond works for the CIA and things like this. Yeah. And his anyway. name is like his name is insane, like Glames or something. That's it, John Glames. Yes. John Glames. I can't. Subtle. Yes. It's subtle, um, but it's there. And there's a lot of instant deaths in this game. Uh, there's a lot of incredibly bad, and I mean horrifyingly bad arcade puzzle sequences. The second mm-hmm. of which, even with a walkthrough, I never got past absolutely hateful oh god uh but there is a bit in it where you are essentially kidnapped by some people and stuck on a boat they tie you to the rock chuck you off the boat and you drown obviously you don't want that happening but beforehand you have purchased from a man sitting on a beach an inflatable bracelet whatever on earth that is supposed to be <laughs> so like <laughs> Obviously, you're going to use your inexplicable (laughs) inflatable bracelet to escape. I could never work out how. And the way you do it is you have to inflate the bracelet first. They then apparently wrap your hands in the rope and then you deflate it underwater, freeing the hands. The problem is you can only inflate the bracelet while you are waiting on the boat for the dialogue to finish. And at that stage, you've been led to believe by the game that there is nothing you can do during the dialogue sequences they're like a cutscene. you have no control but in fact you can bypass it i think you press both mouse buttons or something and get to the menu and then inflate the bracelet but like i didn't know you could do that <laughs> Why? that is That's... tricky yeah the thing is after the um talk i did somebody mentioned afterwards Oh, you uh, do know that that's not even the worst one in Operation Stealth by a huge margin. <laughs> I'm like, not. okay, what? And apparently, and having seen it now in the video, it's astonishing. There is a part where you um, swim underwater, like going into the enemy base, because James Bond always does that, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. And you have to go to a certain screen underwater, click on a rock that looks exactly like all the other rocks in the background <laughs> and get a rubber band. If you don't do that, you're soft locked. You're, you're complete. That's the end of the game. You go through the bits. That's the end of it. And my God, I wish I'd known that at the time as a little addendum. But um, That cracks me up so that, hard. It's, it's not moon logic, that one. That's just the hidden object of doom. <laughs> yeah. sort of thing, but all the same. Oh. It's just, it just cracks me up that such an emphasis is placed on an elastic band to win this situation. Do you want to know what the rubber band does? I do. This yeah. is this yeah. is yeah. astonishing. It's, it's, I think it's the last thing you use in the game. Um, do you know? I've just remembered. It wasn't a rock. It's behind. It's seaweed. Sorry for for anybody who's um, for all those <laughs> Operation yeah, Stealth <laughs> purists out there. <laughs> People using this as a walkthrough for Operation <laughs> Stealth. I will they piece together to... this game from podcast mentions. They listen to every <laughs> podcast. <laughs> they be like, I hope this one mentions Operation Stealth because I've been listening to them for years. <laughs> Come through 140 hours of Spanish politics podcasts just in the hope that they'll tell you how to do the second maze or something. Um, No, so you've got your rubber band and yeah, you can soft lock if you haven't got it. But at the very end of the game, I think it's actually, is it the last thing? No, I'm saying the penultimate thing. Hmm. Basically, there is a bomb when you are on Dr. Y's helicopter <laughs> oh my god! Do you, do you get it, everyone? Do you get it? <laughs> uh, mm. Yeah. So you have to wrap the rubber wrap band around a bomb, and basically, um, when he <laughs> throws you out of his helicopter, the bomb goes with you. He throws the bomb after I can't remember the specifics, and basically you land in a dinghy. The bomb lands on you and blows you up. But because you've put the rubber band on it, it bungees back up to his <laughs> helicopter and kills him instead. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that is a really impressive rubber yeah. band. Yeah, yep. well, what kind of rubber band is this exactly? It's, I, it's God's own rubber band, I think. <laughs> this is the only thing to it. And the joy is that rubber band that soft locks you if you don't get it appears halfway through the game, and that's oh. the penultimate puzzle you use it for. 
Yeah. That is rough. That that reminds me a lot of Sierra games that uh, yeah. you know you got to do something early on, and you won't know that you're messed up. You just you'll just go on forever, not understanding why you're stuck. Yeah, uh, yeah. They we talk about it on this show sometimes. That's the the dead man walking scenario, right? Yeah. You you have lost the game, but you won't know it until you spend five more hours in the game. Yep. Oh, oh yes. There's a game. Another one I had as a kid, which is one of the worst examples of both soft locking or, or dead man walking. Is such a perfect example for that one, or perfect description, mm. and also instant deaths from things you just can't avoid or you just well why how would i have known to avoid that you can't you just walk into a location and you die it's called chrono quest 2 it's okay. a translation of a french game called explorer 2 i think and basically you've got a time machine and for some reason you've used it like an idiot and now you're stuck in some random time and you've got to get back home blah blah, blah the usual stuff but your time machine travels through time by <laughs> do you remember mr fusion from back to the future 2 where um, the thing on top of the DeLorean that uh, yes. Doc yes, Brown so, yes, just put banana peels in. It's yes. a similar thing to that that powers your time machine, but it's only metal. So you just stick bits of metal in it. But depending on the bit of metal and the amount of it and the type, you go to a different time period. So you've got no idea where you're going at any stage. And it's just <laughs> full of things you can miss right at the early on, and then you die later. Bizarre sequences where you're talking to people who incidentally have really early sample speech and it is astonishing you know you'll talk to them and they'll say oh so what do you like blue or red you say oh i quite like blue <laughs> death you must die <laughs> man, man. <laughs> what 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 i didn't know and at no stage has it no. mentioned blue or red before it's just instant game over it happens all the time and also <laughs> the really worst funny. thing there's things like you're talking to somebody they'll say Ah, would you like a magic item? Would you like the magic bag or the magic potato or whatever? <laughs> and you choose one of them. And if it's the wrong one, that's it. You'll find out in about an hour of gameplay oh, that no! you have the wrong one and it's instant death. Even though they both sounded amazing. You should have taken the potato. Oh. I, I honestly, when I was doing the Moon Logic, um, when I was writing it, my original idea was, oh, I must mention Chrono Quest 2 in some way. And then I thought, I can't do this because that's like an entire talk in itself. This bloody yeah. game. It's, oh. <laughs> it's like Discworld it's, levels. Like everything is oh, just off. Absolutely. It's the worst example I know of, of soft locking and instant deaths. And it mixes them both together in a horrifying way. Things like there's just a massive beach and you have to click on the two pixels where there's a bit of metal and things like that. Oh, oh. God. But, but I, I do recommend the game. Do it with a walkthrough. But <laughs> it's yeah. an interesting sort of uh, yeah art experience. You know, the art's quite interesting. The sound is very good. It's, it's, a, it's a well-crafted game in that sense. It's just that the puzzles were made by the world's most hateful man. <laughs> no, the, I mean, a lot of these games I really adore. I, I, I mean, I grew up on Sierra. Those were my first, my first games. So my brain is wired for this kind of gameplay and if you put me in a game like mist or the witness with logic puzzles i'm like what i don't get it i don't i don't understand put cheese in machine that's what makes things work <laughs> <laughs> I, I i cannot stand mist there's something it, for me it feels like the gaming equivalent of an accountant's um excel spreadsheet or something i just can't derive any fun from it you know i'd much rather have police quest where oh, you God. lose instantly because you didn't check your tires or whatever it's just there's just something more to it you know? we just spoke about that particular uh that particular puzzle which i can't decide i don't think it's moon logic i just think it's aggravating where if you don't check your car there's a bomb if you do check your car there is no bomb that's just cruel if you don't lock the doors, it's instantly stolen. If you do lock the doors, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Don't yeah. check the tires; your tire explodes. Do check the tires; you're fine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but the bomb is the craziest example of that because there is either a bomb on the car or there's not. Like you, looking at the car doesn't make the bomb disappear. Like it's not like he's <laughs> you, like you don't oh. have Schrodinger's bombs in America. <laughs> it's <laughs> not like. <laughs> Like all they all they had to do is put in like a bit of dialogue where he's like, "Oh, good thing I checked. Somebody put a bomb on my car." Yeah. Also, 
Does that happen to police ever? No, it doesn't. I, hope never, not. I don't think that's like ever happened. At where the a police station? Officer, We're at like, the station yeah. when this happens. Like, yeah. it's just, yeah. no, it makes no sense. Uh, uh. Uh, but um, I want to I wanna point out another, uh, something else you mentioned in your talk that I just, I cracked up immediately because I had no idea where it was going. But it was the, and I think, I believe Matt has played this game. I have not. It's from mm-hmm. Runaway. And it's, <laughs> and it's where you throw peanut butter <laughs> on a perfectly normal looking shed that you could <laughs> probably just open the door to. I laughed so hard at that yeah. solution. I, I almost found it like a little charming in a way. <laughs> like, who, yes. who thought of this? <laughs> I mean, the great thing is there's a huge complicated puzzle chain in order to get the peanut butter as well so <laughs> yes, yeah. you wouldn't even know you had peanut butter but then as you quite correctly say there's a shed it looks a bit rickety or oh, gonna go in through the window some way of getting in the doors nope you throw peanut butter over it and instantly get inside just like real yeah. life you know is there a time or any game that you kind of liked this more dream logic this more kind of wacky style because I, I actually do have an answer for that. Uh, I actually really like Discworld, and it is the hardest game I've ever played. Nothing makes sense. Nothing. Nothing makes sense. Those puzzles are wild. But at the same time, it's like the most accurate franchise game I've ever seen. It, it just reeks of Discworld to me, and, and I put myself in that mindset, I guess, when I was playing it. And even though I had to use a walkthrough, I actually kind of dug it. I actually thought everything worked really well so when is this kind of puzzle fun how do we make it fun and not aggravating do you know i think it goes back to what we said about charm and characters and things with Discworld, it's so well written mm-hmm. and funnily performed that it you're is. kind of always interested to see what's going next you'll give it more time whereas a game that will just kill you immediately for <laughs> you know doing the wrong thing you're gonna get more fed up with very quickly aren't you you know especially if it's not so well written you know so do you think that's why people get very upset at like king's quest because that was a point where we're not we can't really rely on charm uh not as much at least it may be at the time is super innovative but it's not like you're talking to characters it's not like you're having these long charming dialogue trees you're just trying to figure out what to do yeah, I, I think that's fair. There's certainly a charm to the King's Quest games, but as you say, it's not the sort of charm, not character-based. You know, that it was remarkably difficult to do that with a handful of coloured pixels and some text. Um, yeah. yeah, it's that thing of... Also, sense of humour, I think, is a big part of it as well. Mm, um, that's true. Where Discworld is, you know, genuinely funny. Monkey Island is very funny. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas a lot of the old games took themselves very seriously. Right. That's true. And I think that I think that's actually where some of my aggravation for the more serious games came from. So I'm like kind of forgiving games like Discworld because they just have this humor to them and charm. And we joke about the monkey wrench puzzle in Monkey Island, but we love those games. Um, whereas <laughs> I think back to some of the Sierra games where they, they were less reliant on humor. Um, and it was very, I mean, maybe with exception of like, Leisure Suit Larry, which do we call that humor? I don't know. Up for debate. Yeah, yeah that's uh, hard to say. <laughs> up for debate. But uh, I, my my example is like Codename Iceman, where it was so serious, I I just I couldn't with that. I was so aggravated, I couldn't even riff on it for for a stream. You know, it was just aggravatingly difficult. And there's nothing for levity. There's nothing like cheering me up or making me smile or making me be like, oh, you, you know, there's nothing like that at all. You have just reminded me of a game I wanted to recommend to you, and I've totally forgotten the name after starting speaking. So that's brilliant. Um, Hang on a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try and remember this. <laughs> this is gonna give give us a hint. Maybe we can help. Oh, it's one I streamed. What was it? It's like a kind of more homebrew version of something like Codename Iceman, but you spend most of the game fishing. A oh, falcon, e- uh, uh, something, Lone Eagle, the oh, Colombian yeah. mission or something. <laughs> uh, hang on. Yes, Lone Eagle, Colombian encounter. Found it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. And it's all written by one man, and this man really likes boats and fishing. 
and everything else comes second. It, it is an astonishing game. Um, <laughs> I, I just and, brought up the screen caps, and I'm <laughs> um, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I, I cannot recommend that enough for a streaming game. It is astonishing. Oh my um, it was just good fun to play anyway. But do bear in mind that when you finish the incredible, um, or the incredibly long fishing sequences, there's not actually much game after, <laughs> <laughs> or before, in fact. But uh, I mean, are the yeah. fishing sequence like? I mean, are you? Is it a collectathon? Like, what? What does the fish do for you? K kind of you. Do you know? I can't, I think you're just collecting the fish to sell for some money or something, and then just the game ends. I can't really remember. It was just so many fish. <laughs> oh, you have to keep getting different equipment to catch bigger fish and things like that. And when you start playing it, you assume it's going to be a tiny little subplot, but no, it's like yeah. most of the game. And I after would... three hours of it, you're like, "How is this still happening?" You know? I would feel so disappointed. If I got like what looked to be an adventure game, right? And it's just fishing simulator. <laughs> but you're forewarned. It, there's a lot of charm in the game in its way. Um, there's a lot of fun to be had. But yes, I, I wouldn't be putting it up there as the greatest point and click games <laughs> ever made. But um, it, it's for somebody who is a fan of the genre, I think you'd get quite a lot out of it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I can see why it reminds you of uh, Iceman. It's got that like kind of... I don't know what to call those games. And 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 coincidentally, Iceman reminded me of Operation Stealth as well. Oh, like, there was yes, a of niche, course. You know? Yeah. I've been trying to like conjure up really interesting um, instances of moon logic yeah. from games. Mm -hmm. Or just these are the things where it's just like, how would you solve how would you possibly notice all this puzzle? I was thinking of one very mundane puzzle. Um, in a game that we hate to love and love to hate, which is <laughs> Police Quest Three Open Season, I haven't I haven't played that one. Even though arguably people consider that one of the better written police. Oh, questions. that's so that's the one that's uh, FMV. Uh, so no, no, no. I think four I, is that's FMV. Four, four is FMV. Kings, uh, police Quest Four is what I meant to say. Oh, okay, got um, it. Uh, open Season, um, the FMV one, which. Uh, I, it, it occurs to me that the ending of that game relies on a completely random puzzle solution. Um, when to, in order to find the, <laughs> the problematic uh, antagonist of that game, you just randomly leash a dog in the park. Okay. <laughs> like, like you put a leash on a dog? You put a leash on a dog. Okay. And it drags you all the way to the house of the serial killer. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> you just, there's no, like, as far as I remember, I don't, have you have you played the Police Quest games, Stuart? I've only ever played the first one. Um, that's a good, that's a good decision. <laughs> yeah, well, because we were, yeah, we were talking about the first one earlier, and that's what got me thinking about the fourth one, where, yeah, there's a point, I, I can't recall any reason why you would think to do this there's but there's nothing there's just nothing that's like put that's even hinting at like oh there's a leash on that dog over there there's like nothing. I, I mean i think there's something hinting at that like you want to you want to leash the dog like i think there's something that le that leads you to going like i should catch that dog okay but you but then the dog just leads you to the solution to the case that you've been painstakingly putting together clues <laughs> for for hours now and like following leads and interviewing people and then at some point you catch a dog and it just drags you to their house where you find the bodies in the fridge and it's like oh okay well I got, yeah I mean I could have <laughs> if I'd thought to leash a dog much earlier I could have saved myself a lot of time Imagine if you took the puzzle out of that game and then recreated it in like the plot of a film or something. Imagine you're watching Speed and at the end Keanu Reeves is like, I'm going to get you, Dennis Hopper. And then he puts a leash on a dog and is just carried all the way to Dennis Hopper's house. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's... yeah. You know, there is a um, there's a rule that I've heard in Pixar. And this is this isn't 
interesting in terms of I, i've never thought about this in terms of like adventure game puzzles but there's a rule that pixar supposedly has where you can um stumble into a bad situation but you can never stumble in to like a solution to a situation like you can oh. you can by chance end up in trouble but you can't by chance fix your own problems right like you have to use skill or cunning or friendship or you know whatever whatever to solve to solve puzzles <laughs> and i think that's like i i think maybe that's the problem we're talking about when it feels like you lucked into the solution even if yeah. you did something active to make it happen that's when it, your experience just feels hollow right that's exactly it. Yep. That's a screenwriter hat on for a minute. So the thing is, you, you lose the agency of the character if he mm. can just luck his way through things. It doesn't feel like he, they've done anything to, you know, progress. And when you are controlling or you are that character and it's just like, oh, well, I thought I'd come up with a plan to beat the serial killer by finding him in his house, but I put a leash on a dog and he led me there. <laughs> you you feel shortchanged, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's like, why did we need to do any of this? We could have just got like one of those canines to help. If that's it. Yep. One does not simply walk into Mordor. One puts a leash on a dog and he <laughs> drags you into Mordor. <laughs> Strapped. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What if that was? <laughs> if yeah, Lord of the Rings the is, the they Rings. put a leash on a dog and suddenly they're at yeah, they're at the. <laughs> that are at the volcano and it's like oh i guess i'll just uh, toss this thing in <laughs> <laughs> good so work I, Fido. i have a question about a puzzle that maybe you guys have some maybe we can brainstorm this maybe there's insight for this uh this is a puzzle from king's quest 5 uh have you both played it have one of you played it i've never played a king's quest at all <gasps> mm, no nope. did you hear my visceral reaction <laughs> to that we're going to fix it. Stuart, we're going to fix it. Don't worry. We will play a King's Quest game. I'm actually going <laughs> <laughs> This is going to happen. I'm going out to London later in like July, August, and I will go to your house. Oh, and no. We will... Yeah, Matt's like, oh, God. I, I don't want to be party to this, uh, <laughs> this threat. <laughs> it's not a threat. It's a fun time. Why don't you like fun? It's gonna... We're going to play King's Quest V because that is the most moon logic out of all of them. Uh, Matt, I know you've played. I think, I think you, yeah, you've played it. I have played all, all the King's Quests. Okay, including- great. Well, no, I have not played the whatever the the was it twenty nineteen. Oh, you did a uh, twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. Oh, it was that. It was that early. Um, yes. I've not. I've not played that one, like the, okay, the that's fine. revisit, but I have played all of the other King's Quests, including Mask of Eternity, the weird oh, uh, semi-RPG. Okay, so there is a puzzle. Uh, I don't, let me know if this sounds familiar to you, because uh, King's Quest relied a lot on fairy tale fantasy, some that was more well-known than others. Yeah. Um, and some of the puzzles kind of followed that as well. So you get stuck in like a witch's swamp, all right? Mm-hmm. And there are some, there's a few things you need to have in your inventory. You need to have a pouch full of tiny little emeralds, like earring size, and you need to have a honeycomb that you got earlier in the game before you get stuck. You have to have it. This is how this puzzle works. I don't know. <laughs> Someone help me. You squeeze honey onto the ground, onto a certain screen, mind you, it has to be a very specific screen, you squeeze the honey onto the ground, right? Now you have now you have a splotch of honey on the ground for no reason. Then you flick the emeralds into the honey. It gets stuck, right? Because honey's sticky. A little, like, elf comes out, gets stuck in the honey, and the elf leads you out of the forest. <sighs> yeah. Did, did you know the elf was there beforehand? No, no. You have no oh, idea that there are elves. Oh, that's a crime. That's an absolute crime. It's a crime, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'd have been arrested if all the police hadn't been hit with apples. Terrible. <laughs> I, yeah, I wonder. I, th- I don't, for whatever reason, I don't remember that being a puzzle I got stuck on. Are you sure we're not at any point given a hint that there is somewhere an elf who likes 
Jack. No, I'm, I'm like positive. I'm like positive. I I'm believe like, you. You so, have yeah. a much stronger memory about these things than I do. But also, I, <laughs> for whatever reason, I remember that that is not something that I had to look at a walkthrough for. How the hell did I figure <laughs> that out? <laughs> you were you just got used to it. Like, well, got to try everything. Honestly, at that point, you're stuck in a setting. I mean, you just try everything game is, on, on everything. That game is wild for being unfair to the players, right? I mean, we've oh, talked yeah. about it so many times. The you have to, uh, <laughs> Stuart. We, we've talked about this a bunch of times. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you because I wanted your reaction. So, have you heard of the cat and stick, uh, the stick cat boot puzzle? Stick cat boot puzzle. I um, don't think I have. Stick Please cat enlighten boot, me to the horror. mouse basement. Okay. <laughs> so um, there's a point in King's Quest where a you are just walking through a screen and you see a mouse run by and then you see a cat run by. Uh, and you can just stand there for a second. The cat will grab the mouse and kill it and walk away with the mouse. Uh, Rose is... Correct me if there's any detail I'm getting wrong here. Um, okay. Later, you will be kidnapped by some criminals and locked mm -hmm. up in a basement. Yes. And then you will just rot down there and die. For in Let me just interject. For insane reasons, by the well, way, you walk into an inn, and the guys at the inn are like, I don't like you. Rub them out. And they just kill them. They just lock yeah. you up. They lock no you in reason. a basement. And so... Okay, so you're thinking, so like it's a Sierra game, so you're like, okay, I must have done something wrong, and you play again. Well, eventually, maybe you'll realize if I, maybe, if I stop the cat from eating the mouse, <laughs> the mouse will become my friend and later untie my <laughs> ropes while I'm in the basement. Oh, as mice are famous for doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you don't figure that out, you're just going to keep dying in the basement over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, now, there's a second wrinkle to this, which is you have a stick and a boot. And I can't remember, and Rose, maybe you do, one of them, if you throw, say, the stick at the cat, you later need a stick and you don't have one. Yeah, and that so you, you cannot there. use the boot for. You have to use the boot. The boot is the correct You solution. have to use the boot. It lets mm -hmm. you throw either the stick or the boot, and yes. you have to throw the boot. So you have to, first of all, you have to know that the mouse is somehow going to rescue you in the basement. Second of all, you have to know... <laughs> that the way to get the mouse to rescue you is to stop the cat. Third of all, you have to know that there's a specific item you have to throw at the cat to stop it. It's and just it's purely wild. unfair. And it happens quick. Like, you are you don't even, you can miss it entirely. Because, you know, when you're playing a new game, you're just kind of exploring the world. Uh, you're looking at the screen. You're trying to figure it out. This is almost like an action sequence yeah. that happens, right? You've got to be like, it's almost like a a telltale like press button now uh to do it now i granted i didn't get stuck on that puzzle because i so desperately wanted to help the mouse right i just wanted to i just wanted to i'm like i don't i don't want the mouse to die i didn't know it was my friend or anything but um over I think time I didn't even i would have wanted to help the mouse but i was like i didn't even know what was happening i was like oh yeah, wait there's it's a fast. oh oh whoa whoa okay all right yeah, well that was weird fast. and there's another thing in that game and then maybe this happens in other games as well, where you can interchange some inventory items, right? Like, I think you can, there's like three store owners that want to, they like lost their items and they'll give you something if you trade them for it. Yeah. Uh, so like the tailor wants a golden needle. The, uh, the, the, the toy guy wants a marionette. The toy guy. That's his toy job. guy. Sorry. The toy guy. Uh, the I was trying to grow up to be a toy guy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, and you can interchange like some of them, but there's there's a few things you do that is just incorrect, completely wrong, and it seems correct at the time. Like you can give gold to the uh, to this impoverished family, even though you need that golden needle for like the tailor. It's that game is so cruel. It is so cruel, but I love it. I love King's Quest V. I am a stan. I will always stand that game because mm. it was one of the first talking games I ever had. And I was just entranced by the whole thing, honestly. 
this is a, so i guess this is what we're saying is this is a high recommendation for this game for- <laughs> and, <laughs> and so this is king's quest 5 the one where you won't get any of the puzzles basically <laughs> yeah. yeah basically yeah i mean yeah there's even there's another puzzle if we again we've talked about it on the show but we can't stop talking about it because these things are crazy there's a there's a puzzle where what is it you need a, a bake you need a baked item and you have bread and a oh. pie and you can give <laughs> a person either one of them if you yeah. give them the pie though later you will be faced with a yeti and die it's a it's a mutton <laughs> chop actually <laughs> yeah it's a it's a mutton oh, chop oh sorry a mutton chop it's always chop. a mutton chop a mutton chop and a pie if you yeah so later you'll be faced with a yeti and you'll die if you give them the mutton chop though then you have the pie so I guess the rest of it just makes sense to you, right, Ashens? What? So the Yeti <laughs> will only kill you if you don't have a pie? Yeah, of course. Ah, yeah, classic, just... <laughs> classic pastry Sasquatch. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it is, if you use the pie on the Yeti, it, you throw the pie in the Yeti's face and you get to escape it. <laughs> And that's also like a quick uh, scene. Like mm. this Yeti is just barreling at you. It's just a game. It's just a you. game of this. Like this is, like you said in your talk, you could not use Sierra games because it you would just be talking about them all day. This yeah. is the er example of that. Like these are just. This is a game where just every five seconds you run into another Moon Logic puzzle <laughs> that if you don't figure <laughs> out, which would be impossible you are trapped in an unwinnable situation. It's, yeah, it's, it's lovely. Just, I don't yeah, know what this lovely. says about me. I think my brain is just full of worms or something because I also didn't get stuck on that puzzle because I wanted to offer the Yeti the pie to make friends with him. I didn't want to kill him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Instead, you threw it in his face and And he, he died, ran. yeah. Oh, he dies. He oh, dies. He yeah. It's yeah. pretty bad, Stuart. He like falls off a cliff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor. Well, I don't say poor Yeti. He kills you if you've got mutton chops. Uh, <laughs> dear me. Um, and so uh, we had Alistair Beckett King on the show uh, a couple Ooh, months good ago. Man. Good man. And he made the point that some of these puzzles um, are not only just, you know, just bonkers by themselves, right? They are also per- perhaps culturally specific, right? Yeah. Um, so, for example, the monkey wrench puzzle. You don't call them monkey wrenches over in England. You call them... Fan- Spanner. You just probably yeah. call it Spanner. Yeah. You know what a monkey wrench is, I think. That's, but you, you wouldn't generally use that term, yeah. But does the does the pun make sense to you, or would you be like what? Kind what? of, yeah. Okay. But yeah, but still, weird. it's a bit. I think it's just a weird puzzle, anyway. That is so. <laughs> he had a he has a theory that um, some of these puzzles, uh, especially again the cultural contextual ones, uh, or pop culture ones, right? Like they made it over to um, other countries, um, Eastern European countries, German, non English speaking countries, right? right not, that yeah, have different yeah. cultural references. And when they solved these puzzles, they were like, oh, cool. This is that kind of game where you just do random stuff and things happen. Because as little as these puzzles made sense, even in English, in another language, they make even less sense. Yeah, that's true. Then when game development studios started started developing games in Germany and, uh, and Russia and other, and Spain they kind of thought the trope of the genre was to make puzzles that didn't make sense. So then in the the early 2000s, we just started getting all these, you know, these games from non-English speaking countries where the puzzles literally didn't make sense in any context because it was, they were just like, oh yeah, that's how you do it. (laughs) We love these nonsense games. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I think, so like when you you play a game like Armed and Delirious with the crazy grandmother who stores all the stuff in her bra and she oh yeah i just i just told Stuart about family. this game uh, remember uh you looked it up on stream. yes yeah, yeah. israeli game i believe yes right so the thought being just like the absolute insanity of that game just comes from people being like like you said yeah i love those nonsense games that americans <laughs> do 
so I want to do one. Point. Yeah. Uh, really good again, point. Alistair Beckett King's point, not mine, but it's a it's an amazing point. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I never knew that. You've reminded me of something here. When we were trying to play Leisure Suit Larry, <laughs> and what, what a great game that was. Yeah, um, great. <laughs> mostly remember being run over and creeped out in uh, yeah. equal amounts in that game. <laughs> yeah. At, yeah. at the start, it has like a, a test to see if you're of a certain age or not to be able to yes. play it. Oh my God, yeah. And we were not of that age at all. We were like teen, young teenagers. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, they were all such American references. We didn't have an clue what they were talking about oh, you were just no! sort of guessing to get into the game it's like who the hell is spyro agnew you know i've got no <laughs> frame of reference for this whatsoever you know? i feel uh, like some one of the questions like who was president at the time it was like ronald reagan or something well, In, yes I mean, it... that one we did know <laughs> that was about okay. it. a lot yeah. of those questions were also um like there were jokes there too. Like the answer to the question was a joke that you would have to know the fact to be able to get the joke. Right. Uh, and I remember being a little kid and my dad had the game and I knew I wasn't allowed to play it. So I, would, I would basically just try everything and keep getting kicked out of the game, but write <laughs> down the questions and what the answers weren't until they got the right one. That's exactly <laughs> what we did. Exactly what we did. Yep. And by the end of it, we could play it most of the time and then wow. generally wish we were playing something else to be pretty Yeah, honest. yeah. And then it was like, oh, this, there might be breasts in this, but it's also not very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That. I think we got a copy of Police Quest shortly afterwards and just played that instead. If I remember. <laughs> did you um, know that? It is speculated that Al Lowe wrote a little bit, writer of Leisure Suit Larry, for listeners who don't know, wrote, a ghost wrote a little bit on Police Quest. Oh. Mm -hmm. Today, today I learned. Well, today you learned. I did this because I had to do a Police Quest video. But if you notice in Police Quest, there's like some close-ups of some like beautiful, sexy women. And what does that remind you of? It reminds <laughs> you of Leisure Suit Larry. Oh. <laughs> really? It was yeah. it was that obvious. Yes. Allo's <laughs> contribution to games is uh let's then uh put a sexy woman here. And they're like, oh you've You've done it again, sir. You've, you've done, done it. Done again. it. Allo my does it again. The, my favorite th thing about the Leisure Suit Larry games is how many jokes are not even how many jokes are just single entendres to the point yeah. where you can't call them jokes. Where it's just like, there's a thing that looks like a dildo, and you're like, oh, there's going to be some pun about it. And then you click on it, and it's like, that's a dildo. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I thought there would be a joke, maybe. No, no joke here, just a dildo. <laughs> well, Dildos um, are just funny by nature. I guess we should start trying to wrap up here. Uh, yes, by saying, yes, we should wrap. Um, you know, everybody, make sure you go check out Ashton's video on Moon Logic. I know we've had sort of a rambly conversation about the just the general concept here, but um, Ashton's puts uh, a lot of work into making a very concise mm -hmm. and um, linear, interesting talk about the subject. So uh, go check it out on his YouTube channel. Stuart Ashton's, thank you so much for being on the <laughs> show today and just kind of bullshitting about bad adventure games with us. <laughs> Not at all. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Is there anywhere, uh, anything you want to plug for the listeners? Anywhere they should go to find you and your stuff? Yeah, you can find the YouTube stuff on YouTube under Ashens, A-S-H-E-N-S. You can find the Twitch stuff on Twitch under Ashens, A-S-H-E-N-S. You may notice there is a connecting factor here. Just Google Ashens and you'll find all <laughs> the stuff. All one word, you guys. All one yep, word. Only one word. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Roses, do you, you got anything? You got anything in the pipeline right now? Um. Yeah. Actually, I <laughs> I'm actually working on a modern indie adventure game review. I don't want to mention what it is quite yet because I don't want to influence people. Uh. But that's what I'm working on. And my latest video is out right now, which is on diagnosis murder. <laughs> uh. Please watch Hell it. Yeah. It 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 is uh. I, I, I grew up with these detective shows, and I thought Diagnosis Murder was more grounded, like grounded in reality. It is not. 
it is not grounded at all. So check that out on my YouTube channel. We are part of the Adventure Game Hotspot Network. Um, you can check them out at adventuregamehotspot.com. I guess I should mention, we haven't mentioned in a while, the Adventure Game Fanfare is coming up in mm. just a little bit here. In, it's, it's about, what, two months away at this point? Yes. Yeah, about. Because um, it's, it's the weekend of July. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Of July 5th. The best day of July. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, the weekend of July 26th at the University of Washington in Tacoma, Washington. Um, I will be there. Roses may be there. But also a lot of your favorite adventure game creators will be there, including a lot that we have um, talked shit on on this podcast today. <laughs> uh, sorry, Aldo. It's not that uh, bad. <laughs> So, so you know, go check that out. Uh, think about think about buying tickets. Think about taking the trip out. It'll be it'll be a fun time. And remember to email us, Matt yes. and Roses at gmail.com. Anything else you want to say, Roses, before we say goodbye? Stuart, do you want to go with me to the Adventure Game Fanfare? The Adventure Game Fan. Where is this Adventure Game Fanfare? Why it's in Washington, T- Tacoma, Washington. <laughs> The weekend of and July 26th. What weekend is that? <laughs> <laughs> July fuck. <laughs> ah, yes, now I'm interested. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you know, it is a, it is the place in the US that is the absolute furthest away from where you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, perfect. Yes. One could not get yeah. further away <laughs> in the US from England than... Uh... <laughs> Then Washington I, sh- State. I shall uh, say no thank you very much unless I can find a magical teleportation device then. <laughs> I'll look around on the streets and in like tree stumps yeah. and stuff, you know. Yeah. Where no, you all I'll have to do is put a leash on a dog and it'll just drag me there. <laughs> <I'll> drag <laughs> you there. <laughs> I guess I, I only have two more things to say, which is okay. thank you, Stuart, for joining us. And uh, mm-hmm. Matt, you, Matt, you might have a response to this, but uh, podcast is art. Well, art is suffer.